Hi everyone, my name is Brandon Richards. Uh, at the time of recording this, I am currently a fourth year dental student at the UNLV School of Dental Medicine. Uh, I put together this little video uh, demonstrating a root canal with the majority of the steps that are needed to complete it as just a little reference and to kind of get people excited about doing root canals uh, in the clinic, but also just to give you an idea of what you're going to be doing and what it's going to look like. So today's case, we're looking at a uh, tooth number 19. It was diagnosed with symptomatic irreversible pulpitis and symptomatic apical periodontitis. So if we look at the pre-op radiograph, uh, we're seeing some very extensive occlusal caries uh, that extend to the, uh, the pulp chamber. We also see some widening of the uh, PDL ligament. So we're gonna go ahead and get into the video and I'll kind of describe what's happening as we as we go on. So you'll see the tooth here, The uh, you can see the occlusal caries, they are very extensive. So at this point, we're just kind of removing the caries and we wanna make sure that those are completely removed until we get to the point where one, the caries either reach the pulp chamber or two, um, we have that exposure and we remove all of the caries at that point. So something that we'll end up seeing in this case is that the caries were very extensive and because of that we had a lot of overhung enamel. So what you're seeing me do here is using a crown cutting burr, um, just a coarse diamond to remove all of that overhung enamel to one, increase my visibility, uh, increase my working area, just make the case easier for us to, to work with so I can go back in and then continue removing caries. At this point, we've removed the caries and we are extending into the pulp chamber here. So as you can see, we're just using a uh, slow speed hand piece with a number six round burr. Uh, we're slowly removing tooth structure until it drops into the pulp chamber. So that's something if the pulp chamber isn't calcified that you're going to feel very distinctly. So at this point, we use an endo zebra and we're gonna use that to remove, again, that overhanging tooth structure, but this time in the pulp chamber. What that's going to allow us to do is obtain straight line access into the canals. And uh, you'll find that if you do a good job with your straight line access, uh, you're going to make your life significantly easier moving on throughout the rest of the procedure. At this point, we're using the sodium hypochlorite to irrigate the pulp chamber and also to get a little bit into those canals. Uh, really, at this point, the focus is to make sure that our working area is as clean as possible. So the sodium hypochlorite will help us uh, irrigate and make sure the area stays clean. So at this point, we're using a 10C file into the canals and we're trying to determine working lengths. So with that, we're going to use the apex locator will help us determine patency. At that point, we're going to reach patency, draw back, mark our distance. 
Uh, what you're seeing me use here is a pro glider. Uh, I'm using this to establish the glide path. Um, this is an instrument that you can use with Dr. Lemon's permission um, after you've done a handful of cases. Generally to start off, and what you will have learned in Sim Clinic is to use hand files, uh, the 10, 15, 20, to establish your glide path. So after the glide path has been established, uh, you're going to take a radiograph, obviously I'm not showing that here, um, with your 10 files within the canals to ensure that the working length you have is correct. So what you're seeing me use here is the uh, rotary files. Uh, you start off with a size 20 um, after you've established your glide path, and then you're going to slowly work that down to the correct working length that you have, uh, which you're going to set with your marker. Um, notice the, the pecking motion as we're cleaning and shaping these canals. It's not a, a motion where you just force the, uh, the file in. It's pecking. You're going to feel it pull, and then you pull back. Um, this helps ensure that you're not going to separate files and um, that you're not going to be transporting the canals to some place where they shouldn't be, essentially changing the shape of the anatomy. And then as we're going here, you're going to be noticing that I take the files out and I look at them. Uh, what you want to be looking for to determine your master apical file length is when you're getting that machined dentin on the apical third of the file. So that in combination with the sensation that you're going to feel of it getting tighter down the canal is what you're going to use to determine whether or when you've reached the appropriate file size. So after you have reached your master apical file size in each canal, you're going to take a radiograph with the files in the canals to ensure, again, that you have a proper length. Uh, again, I don't show that in this video. Uh, we have a little bit of a skip here. So what happened, or what we did, was we treated the canals with EDTA, let that soak for two minutes, and then we irrigated to rinse the EDTA, and then we dried the canals with paper points. At that point, we injected sealer into the canals, and then we placed uh, gutta percha into the canals as well. So what you're seeing me do here is sear off the cones, and then we're going to use our plugger instruments to condense that gutta percha, make sure that we're getting it as densely as we can, and then from there, we will, um, after that's done, we take a radiograph um, to ensure that you don't have any voids. After that radiograph's been taken and there are no voids present, you're going to etch the chamber, you're going to bond, and then you're going to place a two millimeter layer of Surefill over your gutta percha just to ensure that you have a good seal. At that point, you would continue with the restoration. In this case, what we see here is we have sealer to the apex of the canals, which is a good sign. Uh, it lets us know that we got the material the full distance, I mean, and we don't see any voids here. Uh, in this case in particular, um, I did not complete the definitive restoration, so we placed a cotton pellet over the, um, the Surefill composite, the flowable composite, and then we completed the temporary restoration with a tempet material. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful in at least giving you an idea of what a root canal will look like. So when you do come to clinic, you are a little more prepared and just to have an idea of what you'll be doing um, in the future. So thank you so much.